Hi everybody, it's Sam. Thank you for watching today. So I'm going to be showing you how I've made these selection boxes. It's become a thing now that I'm kind of making my own rather than buying them. Something I was always given as a child and I think lots of us had them as well. If you're not familiar with the selection box, it's just a box full of chocolates. But it's usually like your sweet shop kind of individual chocolates. So it's always a different chocolate bar in one box. And last year i done the deluxe one. So you had the top that lifted and then the sides that pull out. It's also a lovely jewellery box style and you can put other things in there as well. You basically have this box and then you lift up this lid and then inside here you have all the chocolates so you can put any chocolates you want in here. But I also thought you could put a scarf or a t-shirt, you know, a little bit of clothing in there. Makeup would look great in here. You could turn it into a vanity because this could work as a mirror. But actually I'm putting a gift card there so that's that version. This one you can see if I lift it up. I've got, a, that's just a, a store card thing that I have, like a points card, but it's just to show you it will fit. And I'll give you the measurements for that, but I'm gonna be buying my gift cards to put into these. So I've got two here, I'm gonna be making the third one. And then all you do is just on the sides here, is you just open this up and then there's all the chocolates. So you, know, you can just slide them all out, or you could put them with glue dots if you wanted to. You don't even have to add the acetate. So you could have that as just, um, when, you, when you see me do that bit, you could just skip that bit out, have more pattern paper on here and, and create something else. So it's a really nice box, it's a great size, and let me show you how I made them. Okay, so for the Happy Christmas sentiment, I've used this new clear stamp, and it's the Happy Christmas by Simply Creative. I'll link everything below. And then the poncettias, I've got the last two left for the box that I'm going to make now, and they're just your glittered poncettias again by Simply Creative. And then the papers that I've used across all of this is the Almost Christmas by First Edition, and it's just a beautiful pad, and you'll see the ones I've chosen in a moment. For the acetate, I have this one here, it's the Crafter's Companion, and it's the 9 by 12 It was sold out when I linked it in another tutorial that I used it in, but I'll check again and I'll link it below. But any nice acetate will work for this, because it's not, it doesn't need to be a construction weight, So, and you can also recycle any packaging that you might have, where you get them on your stamps and your dies and things like that. You could use that acetate as well. So I've already stuck a few mats and layers down. I'll give you the sizes for those in a moment. But to make the box, you want these two pieces here. So one of them is eight and a quarter by 11. So I've tried to do a size that everybody can use within their letter size or your A4 size. You don't have to use 12 by 12 to make this one. So 11 by eight and a quarter. And along the 11 inch side, you want to score at half an inch, one and a half, and then 10. Okay, and then if you rotate it so you've got that half inch one at the top, you then want to score at one inch and seven and a quarter. Okay, because it's one inch high this box. Then with this piece here, so this is a piece of eight and a quarter by nine and a half, and you want to score along the, start from the eight and a quarter side here, you want to score at one and seven and a quarter and then rotate it and just score at eight and a half. You just basically want to have a one inch section on three sides only. So you see I've got one inch, one inch, one inch and then I've got the top of that eight and a quarter width free there because that's going to be the top of the, no that's going to be the base, this is the base of the box. Okay then for the flap, so again this is all optional, this is a separate piece that you add on so you might just choose to just have this box this base here you know it's entirely up to you there's lots of ways to kind of slightly alter this along the way but this is a piece of seven and a quarter by eight and a half and along the seven and a quarter side you just want to score at one inch and then you can just fold and burnish that one and that will become our flip lid you can see I've got that lovely gingham print inside and then this is going to be the detail or the design that I'm having on the top. I'll give you the sizes for the mats and layers in a moment. Whilst I've got the scoreboard I'll just give you the sizes of the acetate here. This is five and a half by seven and a half and I've already just put a strip of red tape around the sides there. Then for my because what I've done I always like to whenever I make a kind of an aperture or an opening I like to have a frame so you'll see I've got this gold piece and then this red piece. So if you do want to do that, I've got this gold piece here, which is five and three quarters by eight. And then I've got this piece here, which is seven and a half by five and a quarter. And when we get to that, I'll explain all those pencil marks and everything on there. So that's everything there. All we need to do now is fold and burnish everything. Okay. 
Okay, so first of all with this piece here where you've just scored on three sides only, along the bottom part here where you've got these two squares, you actually want to remove those completely because we're going to attach it all together to make it look like one long piece of card. So we need to remove that one and that one. And then because these pieces are all going to be stuck underneath here, you may just want to take a little slither off of the top and the bottom of all of those sides, just so that, you know, nothing's kind of sticking out. Okay, so that's what you want to have with that one. And then with this piece here, you just want to cut up the bottom where you've got the two squares in each corner. So that will look the same as this piece, like so. This end where you've got your half inch in this piece, flip it around. What you want to do is cut the little rectangle out of the corners. We can cut, actually, you can cut all the way down to the second score line. So you, you've got that one free. So again, cut down this one here and then just remove that top piece there. Okay, now if you want to take little bits off there, you can do, but I always say kind of wait till you put the box together because you kind of want it to lock in. You want it to, to grab and kind of lock against all of this. I know we take wedges away. You can take little bits away from these ones again down here. Just take it away from the tabs. Don't actually take it away from this from this piece here because you um, that's going to be shown on the outside. So you want that to stay the, how it is, but you can certainly take them off there. But these pieces you can do right at the end when you put it together. So I'd leave them for the moment. Now what we want to do, I actually like to have this on the left and this one on the right, depending on how you like to work. But you're going to add your glue to this piece here. So I'm using the Kalau. This is the Kalau Red Top All Purpose. Lots of people message me asking which one it is. It's the clear all purpose, like so. And then focus on your base score line here and you're going to line this one up over the top. Okay. And just make sure that that line, the end here, lines up perfectly with that score line there. And the base is all nice and lined up. So just give that a minute to stick. Okay, now I almost went and stuck this side together, but if you want to cut your aperture so you can have your acetate window, you need to do that before you stick this side together. So what you want to do first of all is, I'm just going to bring in this mat here, is flip it over, because you want to do all your pencil lines on the, the back side here. And ignore all of this here, you just want to work within this, you know, even that side, ignore that, you're just working within this rectangle here. You want to come in one inch, so along this score line here, I'm going to mark one inch and then I'm going to come in here, so there's my score line, so there's the one inch and again along the bottom and then along this side as well. So again I'm going along that score line there and then you just want to join up those little markers that are opposite each other. Make sure you get it nice and straight because these are going to become your cut lines and you don't need to worry about rubbing any of this pencil out because you're going to cut away some of it but no one will see inside this anyway because it's all going to be sealed. And now what I want to do is remove all of this section here. So these now you've got this perfect rectangle shape inside. So I'm just going to bring in, I like to use this bit from Arteza, it's a triangular one, but the reason I like using this one, I'm using a cutting knife. Obviously if you've got a trimmer, pop this in your trimmer and you'll be able to lay down your, you know, your blade um, at the right points. But I just like to sit this one down and I can put my fingers here, but they're not close to the blade. So if I was to slip or anything, I know I'm not going to get my fingers. But you could also just cut a hole here with your scissors and cut out into each corner and you could cut that out with your scissors. So you don't have to do it this way. There are, you know, three options there really on how you can cut this. But I'm, I'm okay with my cutting knife as long as I've got this ruler. But I'm just going to very neatly go along each of these lines. Really push down and push your knife into the ruler, which is why you want to use a metal ruler. Don't use a plastic or a wooden one. Okay, so now I've perfectly cut my window. But like I said, completely optional. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Okay. Again, I keep getting ahead of myself. I just went to stick it all together and realised I hadn't stuck the acetate in. So this is now that piece, which I gave you the measurements for earlier. So I'm just going to take the backing off. So, and then I'm just going to lay this over that window. 
when you're using the red tape just go over it with your bone folder and really make sure it's stuck down and it should go darker the, the tape you can see it's gone a little bit darker now that way you know you've got all the air bubbles out of it okay now you can get this one lay it over this side mine's already got plenty of glue on it so I'm just going to go over it and I can just lay that one over the top so if you want to make a few of these and you maybe don't have a lot of space to store them or you might want to make some now for next Christmas or just have these as nice gift boxes because they are they remind me of the scarf ones that we used to get because I worked in a department store for some years and when we would get our Christmas gifts in we'd have scarves and things like that and gloves and they would come in similar boxes to this so you know you can use it for all kinds of things but don't seal the bottom when I come to do that part I just leave it so you can see how it's all flat but now when you bring up the sides you can see how we start to get that lovely box so I am now going to stick down this end here so I like to put the one where you the base one here stick that one down first and I like to sandwich my tabs in between so you just don't see those so I'm just going to run my glue that one down and then if you turn it up this way and grab your ruler it's static all on mine and then you can just pop your ruler in there and just really make sure it's all stuck down. We've got that box, okay? Next, you want to add this piece, again, completely optional, but that is just going to go on there. So what I can do now is pop this all down, and this is where you might want to cut it if you feel you need to, but because I've got a little bit of weight in mine with all the chocolates, which, let's put the chocolates in, actually, because I can also show you the ones that I've chosen. So if you're in the UK, I went to co the co-op and they had packs of four for a pound all on offer. So four picnic bars, four of the toffee crisp, four whispers, Kit Kats and so on. And there was others there as well. These are just the ones I chose. Now I must confess I've eaten the curly whirlies because along the bottom here you can actually get three curly whirlies stacked up on top of each other and you can get two fudge bars at the ends here as well. So I've got the two fudges there. But you can see how I've laid them out there. Um, again, if you want to do something similar. But like I said, it fit lots of sweets. You just might have to arrange them slightly differently. So let me just open that one up so I can make sure I get them in the same way. So I've got my... Mine's going to move around a little bit because obviously... <laughs> I couldn't resist and I thought oh I haven't had a curly whirly for so long I'm going to eat one of them and I hadn't had a double decker oh I did eat one of them as well but um, I only need three of these so it's okay I kept the rest for myself so but it works out much much cheaper doing it this way and you get nice size bars these are full size as well so you pop that in there like I said mine will move around a little bit because I haven't got the curly whirlies at the top but now I can just seal that up and there we go and that kind of locks in now nicely all right so now I'm going to attach that because it'll be easy now it's got stuff in it so I gave you the measurements for that piece I'll do the mats and layers in a minute all you want to do is add your glue all down that one inch tab and then sit it on top and bend that down and then kind of you know line everything up and bring it towards you but it's really easy actually once you've got the stuff in it to you because you can put a bit of pressure on there now and because again I repeat myself all the time but just we've always got new people the kalal is like a cement when it dries it dries rock hard so it's perfect for when you're making 3d things and it doesn't warp anything but now if I very carefully lift that up you can see how we're getting our box so the you want two pieces in my case I've got the gold here which were eight and a quarter by six and then my pattern paper and it was good because I've used the 8x8 eight eight pad I've had I didn't have to cut the width at all so these pattern pieces you want two pieces that are eight by five and three quarters so I've got the one for the top there and obviously the one for the inside so now I'm going to show you how to create the frames and then um, all I've got left to do is a little bit of decoration so these are done exactly the same way as I just cut my frame in the main card there but what you want to do is on the gold piece you want to along with your ruler just come along seven eighths of an inch there and then I came in seven eighths of an inch again along the bottom mark at seven eighths come in at seven eighths turn it do the same seven eighths seven eighths seven eighths seven eighths and then join them all up I'm then going to cut all of that middle bit out and then this piece here I actually give the measurement of that it's five and three quarters by eight this one here is five and a quarter by seven and a half and this one I came in at five eighths of an inch. 
so five eighths, five eighths again there along that side and then you can see my pencil lines and I've already put my double sided tape on there because I was being <laughs> very organised. But now I'm just going to pop this on high speed but I'm just going to cut the centres out just as I did on that other piece. Okay so I've just taken the backing off of that and now I'm just going to sit this one over and it should just cover the inner frame and you'll get a nice outer border. Okay, and then all I need to do is add some glue to the back side of this and then it will go inside there. And I just think it just finishes off. You could then go in with another gold frame here if you wanted to, but I'm quite happy with the three. You don't want to add too much bulk inside here because obviously you want that lid to just kind of close down quite nicely. So I'll just put this one in place. Okay, and then whilst I've got it open, this piece here is for the gift card and this is two and a half by three and three quarters which is the size to give you a nice frame for any gift cards. But you might want to put a pocket there if you're going to put some money. You might want to actually put cash in this. You can do. But now that's all ready to just use a couple of glue dots and add your gift card. So now all I need to do is heat emboss my sentiment and decorate the top. Okay, so I've just got a bit of scrap card stock here and I've already got the sentiment in my stamping platform because I've had it for the other ones so I'm just gonna put that one in there and then I've got my Versa mark here got my stamp already in the lid and then put that one down you can see there you can just about see the watermark I'm just going to go in once more and then the embossing powder I've got is the Gold Nouveau embossing powder so I'm just going to cover it with that. You can see there it's just stuck perfectly onto the sentiment and it's nowhere else on the white card there. And then with your heat gun make sure you let it heat up for a good 30 seconds before you apply it and um, melt the embossing powder. Okay, so you'll see now I've got that gorgeous, lovely, shiny sentiment. So I'm just going to trim it down around it. So obviously, depending on what sentiment you'll use, this will vary for everyone. But I'm just going to have a little bit poking out there. And that's my guide then to get a nice, even border. Then I'm just going to pop some foam onto the back of this one. Because you can add dimension now because this is all going on the lid. And then I'm going to back it onto, actually no, I'm backing it onto the gold first. So I'm just going to lay it in the corner with a nice even border. And then grab my trimmer and just finish that off on the sides. And then I do another layer on the same coloured card that I used for the box. Again, give it the same border as the gold and white. Okay, and then I'm going to add foam again. <laughs> I was just looking at the other one. I did. I put foam on that one. And then just sit that down in the centre there. Okay, so that's all stuck. And then I've just got these here and the last two of the poncettias. So I'm just going to add a little bit of my hot glue and just sit them put that one around that way actually just so it's kind of kind of hanging over the sentiment but I don't want it to obviously cover any of it like so and then I was tearing then a few of the twigs and then I can just feed them underneath and then just kind of curl up the ends with your fingers just to finish it all off. Okay, so if I bring that up, you can see a little bit close now. You see those gorgeous poncettias, and you can see the little bits or the sprigs there that I've added in. Love all the shine you get. And then again, open it up, 
and you have all of your chocolates. You can just about see my very distorted face there as well. But um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed making these. I do like to do them and um, I know that these will be well received. I just need to get the, the voucher there. You could also do a little pocket, a corner pocket if you wanted to and you could pop a card in there as well. So there's there's lots of ways and I know already some of you will already have ideas of your own and um, yeah, I look forward to seeing them when you've made them because as always you can share all of your makes that are inspired by my tutorials over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group. I will share it below. All the links to everything I've used today will also be linked below and I'll be back very soon with more Christmas projects. Thanks for watching. Bye.